Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Expert to Authority show. This is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses while making an impact in the world. My name is Simone Vincenzi. I am your host. And uh, today we have a very special episode because it's a community episode. Uh, every month uh, we talk about, with our community members, with our GTEx family members, uh, we talk about topics that are really important to us. Uh, they are not just business related, but uh, it's about giving a voice of either issues or causes that are important to us as a community. And this month, the topic is how has being a female entrepreneur impacted other elements of your life? So you can see that there is an article as well that has been published. You can find this article under this video. And uh, this interview is to expand or give a different perspective on the article that is being published. So enjoy. Let us know. Give us uh, as well. Uh, let give us a comment uh, in terms of the feedback and also some of the things that really stand out for you. Uh, so I'm going to start by introducing uh, um, uh, the first person, which is uh, Elizabeth Backman, and uh, uh, she's going to introduce herself and then uh, answer the question: How has being a female entrepreneur impacted other elements of your life? Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you, Simone. My name is Elizabeth Bachman. Uh, my company is Strategic Speaking for Results. And I, what I do is I work with high-level women who have a seat at the table but still aren't being listened to. And quite often it's because they're not speaking a language that others can understand. They're not speaking in a way that they can be perceived as leaders. And my overall mission is to get more women's voices heard in places of power. And the reason why I do that is because my challenges have been not so much being an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur my entire working life, but being a female entrepreneur and the messages I got as a young woman and as a child in terms of don't be greedy, don't ask for too much money, uh, don't brag too much, you know, say, thank you, mom, thank you, grandma. <laughs> and these are ways that so many women stop speaking up because they're trying to do the good thing. And in today's world, particularly in, in business, which is mostly where I work, in the corporate world, you have to learn how to speak up just enough, not too much. And so a lot of what I do is I work towards gender equity just because I have, I have accepted lower pay for far too long. It took me years to learn how to ask for the same as my male colleagues were asking for and being able to do that with a straight face. Mm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about even from your personal experience. What was the hardest thing for you to change this pattern? Because uh, I bet that I can, as I can imagine, those voices, you know, they can they can be there, mm -hmm. right? And they are part of our, as you mentioned, of the development. They are around you consistently all the time, depending on the situation. So, what was the hardest part for you to actually change this dynamic? learning to ask for money, asking for more money and believing, I believe, I believe in my own worth, but connecting that to actual numbers and how to ask for the amount of money that someone with my experience and my reputation would be getting if I were male. And this is something that I watched my male friends do. And I thought, how do they, how do they do that? How do they ask for twice as much as they think they're going to get with a straight face? And uh, it took me a very long time and actually practicing, practicing saying it out loud, practicing saying the number out loud and realizing people saying, wow, I would have expected you to cost twice that much. So. Um, connecting money with connecting my worth with the amount of money 
I should be getting and asking for it with a straight face. That was the hardest. Mm, I, I love it. Uh, thank you for sharing because uh, uh, I'm sure that there are going to be other people listening or watching right now, or maybe reading the article that uh, they might find themselves in the same situation. And what you said is about practice. It's about re repeating that number, practicing that number so that you can be comfortable doing that and say it with a straight face instead of going through the internal emotion or inner dialogue that then can, as you mentioned, get you to play uh, at a lower level in this case, in terms of fees. So thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for sharing. If someone wants to know a bit more about you and your work, what's the best place where I can find you? The easiest way is to find me on LinkedIn under Elizabeth Bachman. And that's Elizabeth with a Z and Bachman, B-A-C-H-M-A-N. All right, that's perfect. And uh, the links uh, uh, of Elizabeth as well, if you scroll down on the article, you can find also the links where you can connect with Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, thank you very much for uh, giving your voice to this uh, really important matter. Thank you. Um, now it's time to go to our next um, person and uh, guest, which is Veronica King. Veronica, quick introduction. And also the question is, how is being a female entrepreneur impacted other elements of your life? Over to you, Veronica. Thank you, Simone, and thank you for having me here. Um, yes, I'm a business and executive coach uh, working with mainly startups, and it's either new startup or established startups, helping them to, to grow their businesses. Um, in terms of being a female entrepreneur, um, I've been in business for myself now over, over 30 years because this is my fourth business. But what I found when I started out and even later on in my business was being a mother and running a business and actually doing what it took to run a business and a family at the same time. Now, we know as women that we are made to feel guilty when we do anything that is outside of family life, apart from going to work. We're allowed to do that. You know, some of us are only allowed to work part time. But, you know, we are made to feel guilty if we do anything that is going to be demanding of our time so that it is felt that, you know, we're taking away, you know, the time from our family you know, in bringing them up the way we wanted them to go. So that was extremely difficult. And one of the things I had to do, actually, in order to run my business was to get paid help. So there I was running my business, finding investment for my business, and at the same time, having to pay to get the help because I wanted my children to be secure and safe. So that was quite that was quite a challenge. And, you know, th there were so many other things. And, you know, and quite often I had to leave my children over the weekend because my, my business meant that I had to travel, travel abroad as well as travel throughout the UK. And that was that was really, really difficult. But I had to manage that by getting the kind of help that I knew that you know, I would have peace of mind whilst I was away from my children. I'm curious to know what piece of advice would you give to someone in a similar situation? And the reason why I'm asking this is because as a woman and having working with a lot of women as part of GTEx, uh, I can see that dynamic of dif people that make different choices, whether they, they focus on the business and pay for support for their family, so they will pay for childcare with the money that comes from the business, or being less busy with the business so that they don't have to pay for childcare. And it's a decision that a lot of times becomes not easy to make, because then it's like becomes, okay, what's more important, or where do I put the most of my energy? Is going to be with my family or with my business? So from your personal experience and the choices that you have made, what piece of advice would you give to someone that is going through a similar situation or a similar dynamic and they have to make that choice? 
what I would advise is that you're not you're not putting your children below your business. You have to have that dual focus because at the end of the day, the reason I'm doing the business is so that I can give them a better life. And it might not be now, but for the future. So I've got to balance that against, you know, leaving my children because I needed to in order to build a business that was going to provide them with a better life. So you've got to balance it. It's a, it's a question of balancing. And, you know, it, it, it's not always easy, but that's something that is critical. You have to balance the two and not, not be, you know, not be worried about, you know, what other people might think. But you know, you know your purpose, you know, you have your vision, so you stick to that. Uh, what, what comes to me when you say this uh, is uh, uh, a, a balance between uh, the short term versus the long term. Yes, yes. The, the short term uh, results versus the long term results. Uh, in yes. this case, it will be the short term lifestyle versus yes. long term lifestyle. And I think that as a mother, um, I can put myself in the shoes as a father uh, in, the, in this situation. It becomes, okay, what's how much am I going to give to my children right now? Because they need my presence. They need to feel the love. And at the same time, I need to set them up for success in the future because otherwise that's not going to help them either if I don't do that. And so that Absolutely. becomes the balance between the short-term decision versus the long-term decision. Is yes. that what I'm hearing you saying? Yes, absolutely. And I might add, my children are now in their thirties and quite often they come to us and say, mom, thank you so much for making that sacrifice because you have taught us that you cannot have anything without making sacrifices. So, you know, it's a win-win for me. It's been a win-win, you know. It worked, it worked out. It worked yes. out. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, for, thank you for sharing. If, if people want to hear more about you and your business, Veronica, what's the best way to reach out to you? LinkedIn. You. LinkedIn. LinkedIn on the Veronica King. Okay. Veronica King on LinkedIn. The link is uh, in the article. So you can see the piece that Veronica wrote and then you can find also her details. So thank you, Veronica. Now we are going to our next guest and our next guest is Marjorie. Marjorie, over to you. Quick introduction and the answer to the question, how has being a female entrepreneur impacted other elements of your life? Over to you, Marjorie. Well, thank you, Simone. My name is Marjorie, and I'm a system strategist. I work with creatives, designers, and artists, entrepreneurs, and I help scale their business through structure, implementing systems and processes, and strategies. And I transitioned from a 25-year career working in the fine art shipping industry into business coaching system strategies. And what I found is that when I transitioned, I expected it to be a turnkey, like turning on the tap and just moving into a different role, but it wasn't that way at all. And the breakthrough came after three years working in my business, on my business, that I had I had taken the same habits I had working for a corporate into my own business. And most of the time, I felt someone was behind watching everything I was doing. And it was no one in the room except me. And I felt stuck in my seat. I never went on holiday. I never did anything because I always felt, I always felt that obligation to be in my business working in my business and doing things around my business. And this affected not only my family life, you know, I'm a single mom and with my son, because I was always at home working. So all the, the, the what he saw was how it impacted um, the way I was. I was constantly in that stress mode because I still had the habits I had brought with me. And once I was aware of it, I was able to make the changes. But it was a mind blowing thing when I realized what am I doing? But it took a long time. It took, you know, the first three years. This is going to be my fifth year. So that's how it impacted 
you know, being a female entrepreneur. I'm moving. curious, I'm curious yes. to know, expanding, expanding on this, I'm curious to know if what piece of advice would you give to someone else that find themselves in a similar situation where, you know, they've just, they've transitioned or transitioned recently or maybe a while ago, but they're still carrying over the habits that they had when they were working in an employed uh, situation because you're right the dynamic is completely different when you are an entrepreneur and you're in charge of your own time of your own schedule and uh, as you mentioned there can be that guilt of oh I, every moment i need to focus on my business because there is that to-do list is never ending anyway every day adds new different things that's the life of an entrepreneur is about deciding what to do today because there is no, never going to be an end so what have you found useful for you and what would you say to other people that to other women that are finding themselves in a similar situation i think it's very important to see the transition like as an employee and as a business owner the habits that your work how you work how you create your to-do list how do you how do you organize yourself you know doing housework because you're working from home <laughs> housework and and work time you have to be very conscious before you even start see that's not what i did i just went in and just did it and i wasn't looking at that and i ended up just working all the time but not really producing the type of work i expected for myself so i think it's really important to work on your mindset that was a biggie for me and then how you organize yourself. So for anybody starting on their own, transitioning from a corporate or even from working for, for someone into your own, is really looking first at how you're going to show up in your own business and making a list. Write it down. Write it down and always look at your list. Um, I did that when I was aware of what I was doing, and it made a massive change from one week to the next it was amazing mm, and i've so never looked write back things, write <laughs> down write things down write down your activity write down what you are doing so there is that awareness of what you're where you're spending your time what are going to be your priorities what are you working on at the moment uh, that that also is very in alignment with the work that you do in terms of working with system and processes. So it's definitely very you, Marjorie. Uh, if if uh, people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Uh, LinkedIn is the best. Um, Marjorie, M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E and Gutierrez, which is G-U-T-I-E-R-E-Z. Okay, and, and again, the link <laughs> is going to be in the, in the article. So if you scroll down and you see Marjorie's piece, that's where you can also see all our links. So thank you, Marjorie, for your contribution. I really appreciate it. Ooh, and you're then welcome. we move, you're welcome. And then we move now to uh, my business partner here in GTEx Digital Media, uh, which is Nicola Reynolds. So Nicola, over to you. Quick introduction and how is being a female entrepreneur impacted other elements of your life? Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm Nicola. I work with Samani. He's my business partner with GTEx Digital Media. Uh, I also have my own business, which is, um, aside from Simone, which is how I started out and actually met Simone in the first place. So um, my decision to become an entre entrepreneur was um, kind of a catalyst from becoming a single parent and having illnesses. So um, it wasn't necessarily a natural step for me, but it was a necessary step. And um, it was more a case of I didn't want to be running myself down constantly and basically raising a salary to pay somebody else's salary to look after my two children. And I'd always wanted to be self-employed, but I didn't know where to start. It took me a while to find my passion and find out what my forte was. And um, this is kind of one of the things that took me a while to get my ex-partner's head round was the fact that he always saw my business as a hobby. And that was one of the really difficult things for me to actually break for him because he never took me seriously. And if I couldn't get my ex-partner to take me seriously, how was I going to get clients to take me seriously? 
And that was a really, really kind of difficult mountain to climb for me because it meant that early on I was very much underpricing myself and not necessarily acknowledging the skill set that I had. And that had a huge impact on me. It had an impact on how um, how I kind of gauged my income. And, <clears throat> but, you know, there was huge benefits for me of being self-employed. And it was it was a really kind of awkward time. And I, I'm, thankfully, I've passed all that now. But, you know, the biggest impact in terms of um, being a, a female entrepreneur was being able to, like Veronica said, basically get a nice balance between being a parent and being able to, to work on, on my own terms and satisfy all of these little kind of things that are necessary as a as female, as a mother, and kind of feel satisfied doing them without necessarily overdoing it and dragging yourself down and talking yourself down at the same time. And I feel more whole as a person doing the job that I do now than I ever have done working for an employer because I feel like I'm achieving something that I've always wanted to do. I'm working on my dreams and not somebody else's. And that is one of the biggest things that I've in, that's had an impact on me as, as, an, as an entrepreneur. Um, when I first, um, when my uh, children's dad first left me, um, he was still on the mortgage. And one of the things that I've been able to achieve, and it's a, been a massive impact on me and my self-worth, was being able to take his name off the mortgage and get the house entirely in my name. And I never would have thought that I would have achieved that. And that is a huge, huge thing for me. And I would never, ever in this, I thought I was gonna end up moving out. I thought I was gonna end up in rented accommodation with the children and I have pets and I didn't wanna risk losing my pets. So when I was able to sign that mortgage agreement with just my name on it, I felt like I'd won a million pounds. It was amazing. So, you know, there's so many things that I could pinpoint about being a female entrepreneur and the things that I've been through to get to where I am now. It's, yeah. I have, I, I have, a, follow, I have a follow on question on something that you said because uh, I had conversations uh, with. Uh, quite a few women that don't have a supportive partner and it becomes really hard when you have to justify every single thing that you do to someone that doesn't believe in you because a business is about 80% failure and 20% success anyway. So it's very difficult to justify every single failure that you have because the majority of things that you're going, we're going to do anyway, they're not going to work out. And then we have the 20% of things that are going to work out. They're the ones that make the difference. So it's very difficult to consistently justify yourself to someone that doesn't believe in you. Uh, if you were to give a piece of advice uh, to other women that uh, maybe they don't have a supportive partner like you have to that helped you navigate that situation, because it, it doesn't stop there. It's also even after the separation, you know, mm. that, that voice that we talked before with Elizabeth is still there. All right, so how would you advise, or from your perspective, other women to navigate that situation if they're going through it? Persevere, be cons consistent, just set your boundaries more than anything else. You know, if you don't want to talk about what it is that you're, you're doing for work or anything like that, you don't have to disclose that information. But if you set that as a, a wall, then you don't have to break down that barrier. They don't need to know what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life if you don't want them to know. Because at the end of the day, as long as you're you're being able to um, provide for your children, whether they're doing their contribution or not, it's, it's none of their business. Mm, that's a very great mindset. That's a great way to adopt it when you don't have that person who is supportive mm -hmm. so that you can keep things for yourself and then you can really because it's very difficult to always have a response for something sometimes actually not saying anything avoids completely that conversation so you don't have to waste that energy and really 
be centered in growing your business and doing the things that any way you know that matters. So Nicola, great sharing. Uh, if people want to hear more about you and find you, what's the best way? Oh, lots of ways. You can find me on the GTEx Facebook group or you can find me on LinkedIn as GTEx Digital Media. All right. All the links as well to connect with Nicola, they are in the article as usual, as, uh, as everyone else. So you can scroll down, find Nicola's contribution and also a follower. And it would be great also to leave a comment if you heard something that really stood out for you in this conversation. Because now that we are going to the end of this uh, and we are wrapping up this interview, uh, there is there are kind of a few things that really stood out for me. One is the amount of hats that uh, women wear uh, that are not acknowledged for. I was raised by a single mom. I saw how my mom uh, did everything, whether it was in the house, uh, raising me and my brother, taking us everywhere, going to work, having a great position also in the local council and uh, uh, directing an entire department in the local council that we had. And I saw her wearing all these many hats. And sometimes I, at the time I took it for granted, but now I can see is like, how did you do it? I, 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 and I, I'm someone to get things done. And if I say is like, how did you do it? It means that she had way more things on her plate and I'm struggling with mine. Cause I, that was a, a a big realization after I grew up and I started putting things in perspective. And I love the fact that we were able to have this conversation, that we were able to give voice of these realities that are lived every single day uh, by women in the entrepreneurial space where they have to make tough decisions. Sometimes the decision is, am I going to spend a few more hours with my families or with my partner, or am I going to spend a few more hours in the business? The guilt that comes with that, as Veronica said, and getting rid of it. Um, what Marjorie said about... Uh, the habits that you can might have ingrained from working somewhere else. Elizabeth said uh, people putting you down and telling you to be in your place. And that becomes now the identity that you have created. So all this uh, that has been shared is real. Uh, I want to open it up a bit more. If there is any final things that should have, we should have talked about that we should have shared, but we haven't. Does anyone who wants to have a final thought or something that really like you really want to mention so i can start with veronica she was the first one then i'm going marjorie and then elizabeth so veronica uh let me unmute you uh what's uh, what's your thing i liked what you said about elizabeth because being put down at work is just one aspect of it you could have a husband a partner or you know people in general putting you down because they cannot see your worth and that's something that women generally have to fight against never mind you know women in business because you're never seen for who you are for your skills your experience you are never appreciated for that and so that that is a big barrier and and it's still there even though there's so many of us now in business for ourselves it is still there so that's one of the things that we really need to work at to overcome uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. That's one of the biggest thing, uh, the expectation that society puts on you. And uh, also, uh, you're right, when you're saying uh, women are seen differently than men. Fortunately, things are changing, they're moving, but definitely so many situations where women are not given the same opportunities just because they're gender. And yes. uh, that can be seen in a lot of stats. Um, Elizabeth, over to you. What should have been said it has not been said yet. Well, I just want to recount a conversation I had a couple of days ago with a woman who's a very senior scientist and uh, published something ahead of a bunch of men who were um, who had were also working on the problem and she solved it first. And she got a lot of hate mail, so social media, hate tweets, etc. And her mentor said, stay strong, keep pushing don't give up. And I thought, okay, I'm going to, I've written it down and put it up on my, on the bulletin board over my screen so that I just remember to stay strong, keep pushing ahead and don't give up. Stay strong, keep pushing, don't give up. 
love it that's kind of great post-it note on on the laptop or the screen wherever on your phone as a screensaver <laughs> whatever you can put it thank you elizabeth uh marjorie how about you what should have been said or has not been said yet well one of the things that as a female entrepreneur trying to navigate home life work life and all that the feeling of overwhelm is constantly there it's always there, but you just have to stay focused and move forward. But one of the things that I do very often, which I try to do at the beginning of each day, is to ground myself. And to be able to ground yourself is if you do a short two, three minute meditation, just go within that you know you can start your day, day with that calmness and the overwhelm just is put to one side and i think that's very important it's a practice i've been doing now for a few years and it's helped me mm, grounding yourself grounding yourself so important so important in particular as you said that that overwhelm is always going to be there uh, the, the sense of whether it's stress or overwhelm never-ending list uh, whether it's on the family side or the work side so ground yourself i love that piece of advice thank you marjorie um nicola how about you what has been anything else that you would like to add? I would, but I've got a dog that's getting going around howling. That's <laughs> we can hear that. So in that case, the dog said this interview is done. Eh? It's time to wrap up. So <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, love everything that was shared. Everyone who is watching uh, or uh, listening to the podcast or you, maybe you're reading the article and you're on that page. Let us know what really stood out for you as part of this interview because uh, every month we are going to talk about a different topic with different GTEx members. And these are things that really are core to us and make us human. This is what uh, we are going through while building businesses. And uh, they are also causes that we support, that we care about. So every month is going to be a different uh, community collaborative interview and article. Having said that, I cannot wait to see you in the next interview or next podcast. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.